Good morning and uh, welcome to our service this wonderful and beautiful morning. I am your host, Idikai Mary, and um, I want to seize this opportunity to thank you very much for coming to spend your breakfast hour with me. It is very, very important to God, to you, to me, and to humanity. I really really appreciate you. I also want to take this time to thank each and every one of you that has been praying uh, for what we do and for me. Thank you very much. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, we thank you for a new week that you've given to us. We enter into it in strength and in might. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to go ahead of us. Release the messengers and the workers of heaven into our lives. Connect us with serious connections that will bless us forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us hear the word for this morning. Good morning, everybody. We are reading Genesis, the first chapter, the first through the tenth verse this morning. Hear ye the word of the living God. very much. How many people are involved in this story? When you read this story, this narrative that we've just heard, who and who are at work? I hope everyone is still with me this morning. Um, Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. There is a very important word that began the earth. Or that began the word that began the that began the the exploration, expose, that began 
biblical language that began to speak to us. And that language is made, M-A-D-E, made. See, he didn't say that God sat down. Like some people just, I mean, there's nothing that really makes me feel unhappy. Like when I see some people just take life so common, so easy, as it doesn't really mean their existence on this earth doesn't mean a lot. I mean, when I look at the migration of the wild beasts, the apes through the Serengeti, etc., or through the, 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 the water flooded areas of Botswana, etc. And I see how hard working these creatures are. Or how hard working the elephants are when they put them into work, carrying big timbers, big woods, training their kids. It's amazing. And then when I turn around, you look at the lion's family. How, how hard they work to bring down one meal. You look at the different creatures of God with the power God has given to them that they recognize they have, their gifted and talent to survive. And they do everything good to survive. And why is that so? It's because they recognize the word made. In the beginning, when time was timeless and there was no time, that's heaven. That's a different planet. There are two planets that we are talking about in verse 1. One is a supernatural planet, so we think. Heaven actually is a physical planet. It's a physical planet. It's just like I, if I ask you, I say, you, you uh, is the moon a physical planet? Yes, it is. Why? People have walked on the moon. Is space a physical place? Yes, it is. People live in space right now. There are, there, there are astronauts that are living in space. In fact, they've grown crops. And they are, and they are working hard to grow crops on, in space. I mean, while some countries are busy fighting and killing their people, Europe and America, China and Japan, in fact, India is joining now, has joined already, they are doing something in space. <laughs> While some countries are busy fighting and killing each other. Why? They are screwed up in the head. Please, if you are also doing all that thing, moving around, touching papers, doing things, then go away from the phone. Don't stay too close to the to your phone so that we won't hear all that noise. Or you can just mute your phone. You will still hear me very clearly. But we will not be able to hear and know what you're doing. See, I come from Africa. And when I look at where I'm from, it sometimes just, it fills me with sometimes all kinds of unhappiness. Why? It's not because we don't have the, the resources to expand and to make, to build human lives and to build things that will make human lives very successful. We have it. But the way, the attitude, and the way people think out there is very wrong. 
completely insane. You go to, I mean, India is breaking away from such mentality. India and China are breaking out of it. They now know that except you move in the areas of science and technology and you are able to use religion effectively as a survival skill, as the power point to pull down the greatness in you. You are not going anywhere as a nation. And India has learned a lesson about that. And that's why they have started to move. You go to the Silicon Valley in California, in California Sunnyvale, or you go to, uh, 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 or you go to uh, San Jose, or San Francisco, all that area. I used to live around that area. You go there and you see people from India in science and technology. Because they've realized that fighting each other is not going to help them as a nation. And they are not going to make no money. And yet you go to Africa and you go to the Middle East, they are busy killing each other. Fighting. Just to be, you see, being in power is not enough. He's doing something with power. Look at God. God being God is not all that he says is that he occupies a place of power and enjoy life with his friends, the angels. No. You look at the life history of God is about making things that will make life easy for everybody. We will, we will not, there will have been no history of human beings except God sat down and think of making us and then he brought it about so that he increased the numbers of people who should enjoy life. That's what it's all about. If it was some people, I got out of power. And that is why it's very important for you to know which side you follow. Because Satan thinks like people in the Middle East or people in Africa. Only one family should become a great family in the whole city. And everybody else should be nothing. If you want to become somebody, they kill you. That's why a lot of people who run back to Africa or to the Middle East, they want to go and build their nation. They want to go and be, I say to you, good luck. Because those who've gone, they, they didn't come back. They were buried. Except God moves you and there is a change in your locality, then you can go to help them. But when it is just a money and a materialistic culture, why do you want to go there? If people cannot even see your face or your name, all they look at you is money. And the money you bring for them to come and share. And that's what, that's, that's the problem. Whereas, my adopted country is all about researching. Finding out, how do we make this better? How do we make this car better? How do we make this light bulb better? How do we make this medicine better? That's all it's about. How do I make my life better? And how you make your life better is not constantly buying from other countries. What are you selling to those countries? If all you're selling is oil, which the money comes from it, a lot of government officials steal. They are not satisfied with what they, what they have. They want more. And now, a barrel of oil has gone down to $20. It has gone down to $20. So let me see, where is the money going to come from now? The smart countries like my adopted country and China are buying off. And now they are not even, in fact, they are not even buying as much as possible. 
Now those who invested a lot of money into, into crude oil, now they see that there's a problem. I was sharing with uh, some elderly folks in the city that I live here in the United States. So my city produced airplanes. That's what my city is known for all over the world. People come here to ask for planes to be built for them. And my city build them airplanes. Business constantly come, business constantly go. But when there is no airplane business, they lay people off. I've seen people who were laid off for, for years, they stay at home until there was contract for that company to begin building again and then they recall them. How can you make money with that? So I said, what about tourism? Las Vegas is a desert. Nevada is a desert. There is nothing there. California, part of a huge chunk of California is a desert. There is nothing there. But go and look at how they have transformed it into a place of tourism and entertainment and good food and good wine and luxury hotels where you can come and chill and cool off and have some space to think. And they are making more money than places that have industries. I'm glad that I'm glad that some parts of Africa are realizing the power of tourism. What you already have is enough to sustain you forever. While you are running around looking for a job, God is looking at you and saying, when is this woman or this man going to realize that he or she is the job? You are the one who have been given the creativity, the power to make things and employ people. But you are so afraid. You are afraid that you are going to fail. That's why you keep working for other people. And because you are a leader in your field, that's why when you walk, excuse me, that's why when you walk into any job, you start having problems with people. Why? Because you are a boss. And a boss going to, is like you are a, a, blue, a blue well in the ocean. Ten feet long or more. Weighing 40,000 pounds. And you want to leave the ocean and go and live in the lake. And the fish and the little tiny, uh, little tiny catfish in the, in, the, in the water saying, what is this big, what is this big mama coming to do here, this big, this big guy coming to do here? This water is not enough for, 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 for us and you. Go back to where you belong. And you are thinking that you belong there. And then they make life difficult for you. Then you start to fight them. Whereas you don't belong there. You have a big world in the ocean. Mighty world out there. And you are living in a small territory. You are a boss, my friend. You are a boss. You are a big boss. Some of you should know it now. That the reason why people fight you in your job is because you are a boss. You are an owner of a company. God sees inside your belly. Universities, hospitals, nursing homes, newspaper industries, television studios of your own, channels, networks. Semi-truck companies. You don't need to have a degree to have a university. You don't need to be a surgeon to have your own hospital. In fact, I know of a guy from Pakistan. He's a surgeon. He called me and he said to me, I see your future. I see your future, man. 
welcome. Say, I know, I've seen your future. That man said to me, when you build your hospital, invite me, I'll bring the best to come and work for you. I started laughing. <laughs> Let me share something with you. If you are somebody that is easily suspicious of other people, what people say or do easily irritate you, then no matter how powerful your gift is, it's not going to be of help to anybody. Because you're going to learn how to look at people and ignore them. You're going to learn how to ignore certain people. If you're going to be the big boss, you are going to let go of being irritable over nothing. That is your name. Your name means too much to you. Why do they have to say that about me? Why is this person doing this about me? Let yourself go. Forget about yourself sometime. That you are not important. That's what has made all these other nations. After how many years that the European colonial masters have left, they are still where they are. There is no change. It's because we take ourselves too serious. Oh, why do you just call me Hidika? You know I'm a prophet. You know I'm a bishop. You know I'm a doctor. Why don't you attach something important to my name? Who cares? All the big dudes that I respect in world Christianity, they were all called brother. Brother T.L. Osborne. Brother Hagen. Brother Lester Summer. Brother Roberts. And we take ourselves too serious. Even if you are a prophet, an apostle, a professor, who cares? What I'm interested in is what you can do with your gift, what you can make. See, that's how the Bible defines God. God is not defined by power, by money. God is not defined by titles. The Bible starts defining God as one who makes. One who makes. One who creates things. Not just for his selfish benefit, but for everybody else to benefit. So that he can sit back and watch and derive happiness by watching what he has made. That's the word there. Made. Created. And that's what you were sent here to do. Some of you think that you were sent here to worship. That your primary job on earth is to worship God. You must be a fool to think like that. Because that's what the church taught us. I was uh, I, I passed through that catechism class. Whether you are Anglican Episcopal, Roman Catholic, Eastern Orthodox or Coptic Orthodox or Ethiopian Orthodox, or whether you are Presbyterian like I am, but with more, Pentecostal, Apostolic, and mine is I'm called primarily for one thing, to manifest the supernatural, excuse me. I don't know why he's doing this. He's going to sleep. <laughs> That's your job. Your job is to find out within you what you're good at doing. Explore it. Dig it. Put it out there. It's not because everybody are movie stars, everybody are now making music, everybody now are pastors and apostles and so on. Everybody is starting church or everybody want to be a medical doctor or a politician. That you should go there. No. You should find out within you what you are naturally talented to do and then what you are also spiritually talented to do. 
to let everybody go and be a medical doctor, but you write one book that make people laugh, and everybody go and buy that, and you become a millionaire while the doctors are still struggling. See, that's how life is. But we don't think that way. I walk into a shop, and uh, nobody come to, 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 to ask, who are you, what, what do you want? And I look around for what, because they were just too many. It was owned by some people from, I think, either Bangladesh or Pakistan. And you know how some of those shopkeepers are absolute idiots. Absolute idiots. They have no business being owners of stores, of grocery stores, of convenience stores. They have no business in those businesses. They don't have any skill in public relation, any skill in negotiation, nothing. And one little woman came out, I think it was the wife of the owner. What are you looking for? No, we don't have that. No, we don't have that. And I look at this woman like she's nuts. I said, you will end up closing this place. I can now see why real Americans don't come to some of these shops. They go, they go to Walmart and to other places. Only their people, only their people who migrate to this country go to those stores. Because they understand that kind of rubbish mentality. Now what are you looking for? We don't have it! I just, I walked away just quietly. Never go back there. It's very irritating. And there was a, there was another in there was this guy, he's Indian. It depends on where an Indian person come from, the side they come from. If they come from Kerala, they come from certain areas. There are some of them that are really depending where they come from and the upbringing. They are very nice people. They wanna make business with you. The the people that I would never want even to even go and do business with are people from Iraq. Iran, Pakistan, Bangladesh, all those areas. All those areas, they will not do business with you. At least people from United Arab Emirates, those kind, I mean, they have seen a little bit of European mentality. So we were, we were pricing. Um, I went into test drive. Uh, this just happened a few months back. I went to test drive. Um, what do we call it? Um, it's, it's made by the English companies. I think Americans are now making it too here. Um, a Range Rover and a Land Rover. And I told the guy that I'm going to pay him cash. I started with that to, to, to see whether he will bite into the price. And he told me it is such and such amount. I said... Well, what about if you can come? Oh, he went off on me. No way. He shouted, no way. He just like this. In fact, you cannot even test drive the car. I went, I went there with some people. And every one of us, we have driver's license. Everyone. The guy won't even allow. And in fact, when I when I look at the, the this thing, the fuel gauge, there was no fuel in that car. See? They will, that guy will be trying to sell those cars till the end of December. Whereas a Caucasian man or an African American man who understand business, you go over there, every car there. There is at least half a tank. At least they've, they've done tune-up. At least they've done oil change. At least they've done some few things for those who really know business. And if that car is 15000 and you tell them, look, I have cash, 10000 cash, they will, they will take it. Some of them will. They will rather take that cash than go through, go through the problem of bank. 
And they will ask you, why don't you throw up at least 2,000 on top of it? I mean, they, they will make you feel comfortable, negotiate with you. They want you to buy a house. They want you to buy a car. But not these other people from some of these cultures. That's why I cannot wait for somebody like Lizzie to be in business. Lizzie is an Indian woman that has followed my ministry for a long time, that I so much love and cherish. Somebody like Ruby in India. Those are the kind of people that are going to run this show with me in the future. I see them because they are so different from the culture that they were born. It's unreal. Somebody from Iran, forget it. They are not backing down. They will think that a dime, they are not having that extra penny, will kill them. And that thing will be there, and somebody else will sell about 50 cars, and they have not sold that one. Seriously. And that's how some people think. Go and look at Walmart, how they do business. I went into Office Depot last week to go and get some, um, uh, some financial uh, 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 software. And there was, this, there was this Caucasian man that just walked by me that worked in that Office Depot. And I needed to, I said, sir, where is, the, where is your, 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 your financial software is here? Oh, uh, tell that lady, tell the other lady, she will come and uh, And I look at this man, he was just, he walked by up there, walked by down here, talking on his phone. I said, I can now see why a lot of office max, office depot, they've closed down. Whereas, if I walk into Walmart, Sam's Club, or Best Buy, they rush to make that money from me. They rush to help you. Or you go to Macy stores or dealers and you need the kind of cosmetics for your face. Oh, they, they sit you down and they bring different ones. In fact, they fill the table with different types. And they have an expert to put the makeup on you. And uh, do you like this one? Uh, this, and they'll be telling you who are the makers of this. Uh, you see, this does this. If you mix this with this, it will be this. And they are putting it on you and smiling at you, making sure. Uh, is there something and you say, oh, I need a bra. I need a... They are willing to give you the best and tell you about how they work. And that's exactly true. And you end, and you end up leaving that place feeling like you won a million bucks. Because they know their job. They are making things happen. Never go to any store that insults you. Never. I went into a store and as I was shopping, I bought a, I bought a juice. Because I was very thirsty. It was like 100 degree. And you guys know that I cannot stand the heat. It's not good with me, with my health. And I'm drinking the juice until I finished shopping and then I came to the, uh, to, the, to the register to be checked out. It was the first thing I gave to the, to the, to the, to the lady, a Caucasian lady, to check me out. And she rang it and I finished. And I said to her, do you have a trash, a trash a can here? So that I, she said, oh, we are not uh, customers are to throw the trash out there. Hey, they are not to leave it in the trash thing here. I said, who made that law? Who made that law? Every store in America has a trash can. And you guys don't have it. say, oh no, oh no, oh no. So they finished ringing me up. I said, okay. As I was about to leave, I took that, I took that empty juice can and I dropped it right on her register and I left. Say, so you try me and I'll return everything that I've bought here. And I will go to the best business bureau 
and report to you. And in fact, I will go to the city and report this business. If you guys cannot have a place for people to ease themselves and a trash can for people to throw things in, then you have a serious problem as a business. You are not yet ready. Your job is to make things happen. That's your job. Your job is to create things. Don't let a day pass you by without you making something happen. Now, the video this morning, what I'm ministering on this morning will be in the internet. It's not for sale. It's for the public. Now, let me, let me ask Alexis to jump in to tell us to invite us to the Las Vegas conference. Uh, let me also ask, is Geneva on the line this morning? Yes. Okay. Geneva, do you want to start by telling us about the conf about um, our programs? If you, if you don't have it, you just let me know in front of you. All right. Alexis, go on. And, uh, and talk to us about the Las Vegas conference because I, I believe there is still a lot of space for people to come. This is a world premiere. Manifesting the Supernatural Conference 2015 will be held Friday, October 23rd from 2 p.m. until 5 p.m. at the Hampton Inn Hotel. The address is 2852 East Craig Road. North Las Vegas, Nevada, 89030. The phone number is 702-655-0111. The theme for the conference is Creating a Dream for Your Destiny. Registration is $222. You would need to register by October 14th. The room rate is $104 per night. And the conference is for the first 50 people. Okay. See why I see why I have so much love for uh, this lady, Alexis, that handles our public relation stuff. Is even if this girl is in her bed sleeping, even if this lady is in her office, she manages doctors and nurses, people in the medical field. She manages a clinic. Even if she's driving to the airport or traveling, if I, if I call her to speak about something, she has it in her purse. She has it in, in her purse. She will just bring it out. She printed it and she will read it out. I like that. That's a sign of somebody that knows what, that understands business. That's what we are talking about. Uh, our business hours also for this ministry is Tuesdays to Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Time. And during those times, you can call the office. If you live in U.S. and Canada, it is 316-243-2967. And also, if you live outside the U.S. and Canada, if you want to call our, our office, it is 702 992-0792. Um, also, if you want to call the, 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 what we call the mother house, the mother house is the company that houses all of our business. And that is Idikai Mary LLC. It hosts all the things that we do. If you want to call if you want to call that, it is 316-665-4400. And then our conferences is Fridays and Saturdays only. 10 in the morning and 10 at night for those two days. Always 10 in the morning, 10 at night. 10 in the morning, 10 at night. Central time. So find out what central time means in your local area. If, if you go to the uh, website, there is, um, there is a, there is a, if you go to 
uh, weekly activities and all of that, you will see that we have a time uh, converter. So if you click on the time converter, it will convert central time to your local time so that you know what time is it that we have our meetings wherever you live in the world. And during that time, you can just type in on your browser, you can just go in on your search, Idikai Mary Show, and you can watch it live, or you can call this number, 712-432-1212, and the code is 648-355-878-POUND. So, Friday, Saturday, but there are also some special days that God provokes me to call for meetings. We call it special meetings. Now, we are going to have one of those special meetings beginning tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm going to be filled with a lot of activities. Remember that we will have one more, we will have one more conference for winners and achievers tonight by 9 p.m. tonight. 9 p.m. Central Time, um, which is 10 o'clock in the East Coast and 7 o'clock in the West Coast. Um, that is tonight. But tomorrow, tomorrow morning, I'm having a service. Tomorrow morning. And then, 6 o'clock tomorrow, we begin the Supernatural New Year. The Supernatural New Year begins tomorrow you will all of you will receive emails you will receive voicemails from me today concerning that it's gonna last tomorrow tomorrow monday and it will end uh by by uh, by nine o'clock tuesdays so you're gonna see the emails you're gonna also hear the voicemail that will come to you that will tell you the different things that will be happening from tomorrow from tomorrow so I want you to be aware of this there will be several meetings prophetic meetings beginning tomorrow evening there will be several prophetic meetings so mostly I will not be praying for people I am there are two prophetess that will be ministering alongside me so sometime tonight, I'm going to surprise them. I'll wake them up from sleep. And I'll start consecrating them for what is about to happen. There are also some of you who are seers, who can see, like I do. And I am still trying to train those people. But there are two people who will be in this thing with me. Uh, beginning, beginning tomorrow. Remember that whenever we enter the supernatural new year, uh, if you call me to pray for you, you will experience that I don't pray for you. I speak over you or I make a sound over you. And that's all. And things happen. So that's what is going to happen. If I were you, I will, those of you who want to talk, just talk. Don't call me just to talk. Please don't. Do not. During, from today, all the way to Wednesday, I, I am in a different mood. And when I enter into that place, please do not call me. Leave me alone. The uh, other people can solve your problem, not me. If you call me, make sure you have a problem for me to solve. Tell me in one second, two, three, four, five seconds. I want to know what it is. If you don't tell me, the Spirit of God will tell me and I will make a sound over you or pronounce over you and then you go. That's it. Don't try to chat with me because it, I, won't be, I won't go there with you. That's where some of you think I'm rude. No, it's because I'm in a different territory altogether. I'm in a different place. So don't call to tell me how are you and to chat with me. It's not, it's not acceptable during this, during this supernatural new year. If you call me, you're calling for me to speak a word over you, and then you go to the website and donate, uh, and, and, and praise God. Donation simply means pressing God. You go there and show your appreciation. That's how we'll be 
walking through this till Tuesday. And so we will have we will have several uh, prophetic things happening. So when we get up from this meeting this morning, I'm going to consult with uh, with uh, with with uh, with Beverly in England, and with Max, and with Berlin, and a, a couple of other people who are into this. And then we'll go. We'll determine how many hours when each prophetic session will happen, so that people in different countries can 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 kick in and be and be watching this live. So don't expect when you call for prayers to be made. No. There is a place where prayer works. And there is a place where prayer sucks. And when I say that, that prayer sucks, it means prayer is not necessary. Therefore, it won't even be heard. If you go through the New and the Old Testament, you will see that way mighty things happen in people's life. Prayers were not said. Power, words of signs and wonders was released into them. Just one word. I'll give you an example. When people consulted Elijah and Elisha, they never prayed for them. Go and look at the Bible. None of them ever prayed for anybody. Because they carry so much power in them. The, 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 the man from God will say to Naaman, will say to, in fact, he won't even come out to meet Naaman. If it wasn't today, well, then he know that I'm a billionaire and a millionaire. It's, what an insult. You will not even come out to come and see me. Yep. The man of God have to Send his servant to go and tell, tell Naaman that he should go to the Jordan and dip himself seven times. That's all. No prayer, no fasting required. <laughs> That's the kind of lifestyle that I have been introduced to. That is why my job is to manifest the supernatural. I hope you are getting it, who I am and what I'm called to do. So there is a place where I go the scenic route, the scenic route. The scenic route is what we call prayer. It's like you are traveling on Greyhound and you know that Greyhound will never arrive. You wait forever because it's going through the scenic. It's going through the boonies and towns and then turn up in the city and back into the alleyway and through the back back, back uh, road and so on so by the time you arrive your butt is killing you your feet is killing you and then every little stop they will stop to pick up to pick up people different kinds of crazy people will come in and out that's why I like flying Boom. and then I go my way thank you see ya now you are sitting with the same people for hours, forever. Everyone is farting on everyone. <laughs> everyone is coughing on everybody. By the time you leave there, you are sick, nausea. You have flu. You've got somebody's bag. Oh, gosh. God, please help us. You don't need no scenic route. You don't need no scenic route. Real work of God is not prayer. I'm just letting you be aware of it. The real power side of God is not prayer. It is declaring. And declaring is not you going on for hours and no, 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 no. It has to do with you see, if you have enough of supernatural power in you, you say one word and it happens. Some people were complaining that they didn't have umbrella. Their kids spoiled their umbrella. And it's, it's raining heavily. They need to go to the store. I said, okay. You still want to go to the store? I say yes. I said, okay. Stay on the phone. 
And I shouted into the phone, rain, stop. Did you Mary speaking? Right before their eyes, the rain stopped and the sun came out in a second. There are things that doesn't require prayer, that require you to know the laws that governs those things. The instruction that governs the power world. How the supernatural operates, you, you key into it. And when you make a sound or you speak a word, that's it. Everything opens up. That's the kind of power world that I've been introduced into, that I've entered. And I know that I entered into it since 2018. I knew that that has happened. And it's just when God gives you a gift, now you have to fertilize it. You have to grow it. It's not automatic. You have to grow it. It's like you've been, you've been given a baby to raise. That's how this thing goes. And then, as you submit to God, as you yield to Him, the glory begins to meet your giftedness, and that's a different ballgame altogether. So welcome to the Supernatural New Year. Now, for these three days, beginning tomorrow, we are going to be ministering about the Holy Spirit, God of the impossible. That's gonna be that's gonna be great. The Holy Spirit is God of the impossible. See, I waited and waited and waited until I'm given, until it downloaded, until they speak to me from that department. Then I know what where we are going. If it's some people, some pastors, oh, they want to study. They want to go to their studies and study and study and come up with something for everybody. And God is not involved in it. Whereas you have to study and wait on God until he tells you. The Holy Spirit, God of the impossible. And we will not be able to exhaust this in three days. This is a huge planet for me. So, beginning tomorrow, Max, you will you will read, you will read that passage again. I'm not allowed to go into it this morning as I wanted to go to. It's, it's meant for tomorrow night. So we just look at the word made this morning, and that's your job to make good things happen for yourself and for others. God has created a world for himself in which everyone who are sad and unhappy are not allowed in. I'm just letting you know about this. People who lie, manipulative, all kind of crazy people are not allowed in. People who do not yield and become God's cheerleaders are not allowed in. So why do you allow those people in into your life when God does not? Everyone who doesn't come into God's presence to make God happy is not allowing. I just want you to be aware of this. Why? Because God cannot create, cannot make with those kind of energies. Energies of quarrel, energies of fight, energies of this, energy. No, 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 no. God cannot work with those attitude and mentality. He wants happy people. People who are constantly laughing, smiling, and at the same time serious. That's what God is looking for. So I look forward to seeing you during the Supernatural New Year, and I look forward to seeing you in Vegas. If you have not yet registered for Vegas, go and do that immediately. You can do that on the website, or you can call our ministry, and we will help register you. Just bring your money, $222. It's nothing to be compared to a life of unlimited blessing forever.
There is somebody that I want to speak to this morning who is watching this telecast. You are planning to go and get a loan. You are planning to go and get a loan. I don't know what you want to do with it, whether you want to buy a car or something. You already have a car. God is telling you not to get that loan. To wait. Wait. You don't need that loan. That loan is going to put you in trouble. I'm also talking to somebody this morning. You have been throughout the night thinking of quitting your job. And you have no plan whatsoever. There is no other job that is going to fetch you money. But you want to quit because you are angry. And God is telling you, if you quit and then you go back to him, God, to ask him for another job, he will not even answer you. There is somebody else this morning that I'm talking to. There is a man that you met at the internet. The internet has become a place for you to fish. So listen carefully. The internet has become a place for you to fish. And you think that the angels are not watching you. The Holy Ghost is telling me that that is also going to lead to all sorts of problems that you did not imagine. Keep your emotions in check. If not, it will destroy you. There is somebody who is trying to contact you from outside Canada and the United States. And you are buying into it. And they are promising you this. They are telling you what they are. And that person is not what he is. You have been making plans. Even if you don't have much right now, you've been making plans to allow that person to come in into America. And you are going to pay a big price for your foolishness. There is somebody else that I'm asked to ask this question. When will it dawn on you that you are not a marriage material? You were not made to be in a marriage. That's what I'm asked to tell you. When, when, when are you going to make sense of it? You are not a material for marriage. That's not your calling. You are called to be a single person. The reason is because your character and your attitude is not a marriage attitude. And it's not a marriage character. So why do you want to be in it? You've been in it already. You've been in it again. You've been in it again. Why do you want to be in it more? You're bringing your kids into great confusion. And your kids are like you. Monkey see, monkey do. And you are blaming your kids for not being the right kids. Walk away from marriage. Stay in relationship and stay in your job. Because you, you don't have what it takes to be in a marriage. Marriage is a college. You must earn it for you to qualify to be in it. You've not yet entered into a place of relationship. And yet you want to go into marriage. There are some of you that want to start a business. You don't have the patience. You don't have what it takes to start a business. You don't even know how to put something together. You don't even know how to talk to people without quarreling with them and getting angry. You want to start a business. Good luck. <laughs> I went into a Walmart and 
and I was checking out some stuff and one of their managers was coming. I said, sir, come here. And he came and he thought that I was going to, he, he, he produced his hand for me to greet him, to shake his hand. Instead, I poke him on his side. I poke him and I, I make this sound. Boop, boop. He started to smile. Then I know that he's a good manager. He said, you like to play? I say, well, I was just trying you to see. I said, are you bringing the prices lower? He said, all the time. And he smiled. I said, what, what can I do for you? I said, oh, I'm looking for this. Come on, let's go. Let's go and get it. And we got it. And he took it down to the place, uh, to the, to the, uh, to where they check out. And he told the girl to give me a so and so discount. I said, you know your job, man. See? Those are guys who want to make money. They don't take themselves too serious. The guy that really, really pushed me, pushed me from the mountain to fall down to the valley without breaking was a white male, white beard, a deacon. And I came... I came to get gas in his gas station one day and I saw him on his knees. And he was scrubbing, scrubbing the floor where you get gas, not inside the gas station itself, not inside the little mini convenience store, but where you get the gas itself. He was there scrubbing early in the morning on his knees, the owner. He's a millionaire, but he was on his knees scrubbing the floor. And I watched and I smiled and I said to him, how are you? He said, it's, it's okay. He's just doing his job. He want this place to be nice for us. I was shocked. If it's some of us, we tell because we've already made all the money in the world. We don't need to be coming back here. Let others do it. And I can now see why that guy is young. He goes fishing, he scrubs floors, he helps build houses, volunteer, and he's always nice to his staff. Doesn't take anything too serious. There is a place for you to relax. Just re relax and keep creating stuff, keep making things happen. <laughs> May the Almighty God who raised Jesus from the dead fill you with this sense and hope and power to create things, to make things happen, to make things, to make things, to take life easy. Let him fill you with this kind of character and attitude so that you can bring about abundance of good things on the earth. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. Is there anybody that has a question this morning? Okay, Stella, will you will you give me like uh, twenty minutes after this conference, when we get off the A, then you can you can kick it in with me and let me also check and see whether I have the email for for Anne and for and for is it is it Tina and for Tina? Yeah, yeah. yeah. your group. Let yeah. me see. I want if I don't, then I will want to key it all in at one time this morning. And if there is any other person who, you are not receiving email from me and you are watching around the world, please let me know so that we can put you in our directory. Please, please, please. Because normally what what Geneva does is she send out when you contact us the first time, you contact the ministry. What she does is she will ask you a question whether you want to be put on our email directory. So if you don't answer that and you say yes, if you do not answer that, she won't. She will not copy your email and type it in into the directory because we just want to respect 
uh, your privacy. But if you say yes, we'll do that. So please, those of you who want to receive emails from us so that you know what we are doing at a particular time, because there are certain things that happen, they what we call special supernatural moves in the heavenlies that could just happen immediately. And God will tell me, call everybody together and let them know about it. And instantly that will save your life very quickly. I have known God asking me to call an event and I told people in certain areas, hey, get prepared. This is what is going to happen in your area. Boom, 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 boom. It is on. It began happening in their territory. So sometimes, sometimes a vision is given to me, a dream is given to me, a word is given to me, a trance, or I'm connected immediately. This is what the enemy is about to do. For so and so person, contact. So I will just call you. If I, if I don't get you on your voicemail, I will leave you an email very quickly so that you know. There are some time I will tell you, hey, listen, call off. Call sick today. Don't go to that job. There's something about to happen. And you, you, you take off. The next day you heard what happened. Yep. I have told somebody, don't go to your job tomorrow. There's something seriously. Stay home. Call off. Call sick. And she did. And a wind passed through her job and pulled things down. And she said if she was at that job, she would have been the one dying. So things do happen. Sometimes you want to travel and I will ask you to take this other airline, not this one. Go this route, not this route. That's why what I do is called supernatural direction. You're receiving instruction. You see, prayer, prayer is different from instruction. Instruction makes prayer to be answered quickly. God bless you. I'll see you guys tonight by 9 o'clock. Bye-bye.